Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about four stocks that I'm up huge on. I'm going to be going through what these four companies are, why I like these stocks, some business overview about them, and then some parting words on each of these stocks in terms of why I still hold them and why I think they will do well still moving forward despite being up big on them. If you like this kind of content, before getting into it, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And without further ado, we'll get into the first stock, which you can see on your screen is Pizza Pizza Royalty Corp. Pizza Pizza Royalty Corp, you can see here, I'm up about 45% just on the stock price, um, in it for an average of about $10 a share. We just traded down from about $15 a share here today to $14.70. So up pretty nicely on that holding. Looking at their stock chart a bit here over the last five years, they've done actually a pretty good job for of Royalty Corp of growing up into the right. One of the reasons why Royalty Corps sometimes have a harder time growing their stock prices is because they pay out about 100% of the royalty income in dividends. So they're not really buying back shares. They're not investing for growth themselves, even though the operators typically do that. Um, but you see here, in addition to that 45% gain, I've been getting over a 6% yield a year that gets paid to me monthly. And that's why on this one, even though I'm only at 45% on the stock, my total return is well in excess of 50% because of all of the 6% dividends that I have been getting on this one. So Pizza Pizza, going into their stock a bit more, is a pizza chain they own the Pizza Pizza brand. They also own Pizza 73, which is a pizza brand um, across Alberta. And they just opened a new format store called PZA Pizzeria, which they are expanding into Mexico with, which is a really exciting um, new opportunity for the royalty fund in terms of just growth and, and uh, expanding into uh, a new market. So this is the businesses that you're investing in in terms of the profit centers that, that you'll have bringing in royalty income every single day, about 650-ish pizza pizzas, 100 pizza 73, so 750, and then just three locations. They're trying to get the 10 by the end of the year, but this will be a longer term build out on the Mexico portion. Looking at their restaurant growth over time, you can see that they actually were going down and that's why their stock price took a bit of a, a dip at some points here, you see, from $14 down to $11.50 and, and, and whatnot. They were going from 773 restaurants. Two years later, they were at 726. They've really stabilized and then recently started to turn this around. If you look at what their goal is, um, or at least what they've resulted in, in 2005, they've increased their net worth by about 2%, which does a good job of... Um, adding top line royalty income into the fund. So that's nice to have as a driver of royalty income for the fund. The other thing here is unlike just some royalty funds who just pay a dividend, um, don't really increase it or it's just a high starting yield and that's it. Pizza Pizza Royalty has actually increased their dividend um, many times. So they've increased their dividend a ton of times throughout uh, the last 20 years or 15 years. But this is just them getting back to their normal distributions after COVID. They slowly increased their dividend as they were making more royalty income from, from sales. So you can see here they've done about half a dozen dividend increases to get back up to what they were paying out before COVID. Looking here just at their last quarterly results super quick, they had um, top line sales increase 11.2%. Same store sales were up 9%. Really good numbers. Increased their dividend a tiny bit, about 3.5% there. If we go down to some of their brands, you can see here Pizza 73 has really been a bit of a headwind to overall growth, only growing 7% um, this year in the second quarter and actually was declining in second quarter year ago. If we look at year to date, up about 5% here down from 12% at Pizza Pizza. So a bit more of a cyclical um, business, Pizza 73, Pizza Pizza's um, more geographically diversified across Canada uh, and, and also the much bigger brand in, in the network. But I like how they break it out like this so you can see what parts of their business are healthy. So overall, I like Pizza Pizza for their monthly stable cash flow. Hopefully will go up over time. They just have a really good market position 
on pizza in the Canadian market. All of that other stuff in terms of them expanding into Mexico and whatnot is just kind of like an option uh, in terms of if it goes well, that's great. If not, I still think the underlying assets are, are fantastic at this valuation to be getting over a 6% yield and some growth prospects in the home market. Total market cap on this one's $360 million, but you really only own that top line royalty off of Pizza Pizza. You don't own all the restaurants. Those The operations are owned by franchisees mostly. Going into the second stock, it's another food stock actually, coincidentally, it is uh, McDonald's. So going here to take a look at McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm up 56%, almost 8,000 US dollars on this one. So I've done really well on McDonald's as well. It's paying a dividend yield of just over 2%, and that actually has increased with time. So in addition to the really strong capital gain here, I've also got um, a couple points a year from the dividend that helped me out on this stock. I love McDonald's stock. I love so many things about it for starters. Um, they stand for value in the quick service restaurant space, which I think will never really go out of style. They also have tremendous brand equity all around the world. And on top of that, they have a great geographical presence uh, in so many different countries. So it's really immune to any huge economic falling or natural disasters in a particular country um, just because of their presence around the world. You can see here past five years, they're up about 75%. Looking at this company a bit more, you can see here their operating income by segment. So this just shows in about 50% of their revenue has been or income has been coming from the US. So they have 50% from international markets. Some of that is just completely licensed away, um, like this 14% here where they just give master franchising agreements to a country or an operator in a country, whereas 37% they work with directly um, in those international markets. So I really like the 50-50 split here uh, in terms of international exposure. Looking at McDonald's here, it trades for about $280 a share. They've actually trended down a bit. They were almost at 300, you can see here in the 52 week range. And just looking at their earnings per share estimate here, they're expected to do just over $10 this year, just over $11 next year. So they're trading at about 25 to 26 times next year's earnings, about 26 to 27 times this year's earnings. So definitely a rich valuation, but I think that's just what you pay for having a company with one of the best brands in the world, just dominating the quick service restaurant space, super well diversified globally. And the other thing is they these operators make tons of money who have McDonald's. It's not like some of these other fast food chains that if sales go down five or 10%, they may have to shut down their locations. I think McDonald's can really withstand some economic hardships over the short to medium term. If they come, these restaurants will still be profitable. They won't shut down. And then they'll just benefit from everything that does shut down on the next time it does have another uptrend in the economy. So I really like McDonald's. I know it's a bit of an expensive stock to get into at the valuations it's currently trading at. Um, but it is probably my favorite long-term play in the restaurant space. Going into stock number three here, or I have one more thing um, that I like about McDonald's stock, forgot about this, but another thing I really like to see in these stocks, and you'll see on the next one as well, but I really like stocks that are um, returning shareholder to cap capital to shareholders whether that's through dividends, which is great, or share buybacks, or ideally both. So McDonald's pays a 2.2% dividend, but just look at how much of the company they've bought back. Almost every single year over the last 15 years, they've been buying back um, shares. So they've lowered the share count from 10 years ago from a billion to 730 million. So they pretty much bought back a quarter of the company for their shareholders. Now I own significantly more of McDonald's than I used to back in the day. So that's another nice benefit. Instead of me going out, continuing to build my position every day in McDonald's, I can do that. But in addition to that, they're also buying shares on my behalf with the equity I already own. Going into the third stock here, it is Microsoft. So just looking at Microsoft a bit deeper here. Microsoft, I'm up almost 100% on in my portfolio. I remember buying this one. The first buy I did of Microsoft was around $115, give or take. But I remember thinking it was so expensive. I think it was trading around 30 times earnings. I had to like bite my tongue to buy it. Um, and now here we are, you know, maybe three, four years later, I can check on the chart. 
but we're trading at three times the price and it's still trading at the same price to earnings ratio. So they've tripled their profits. I'm so happy I bought into this one because I really do love this business and, and love uh, the stock. So Microsoft is a huge company here. It is paying a 0.8% dividend, but practically just change at the end of the day, um, just for the sake of having a dividend. They do increase it every year. So I'm looking at how fast they're increasing the dividend at least. But the market cap is $2.4 trillion, making this one of the largest companies on the planet. They're up 200% over the last five years here. So this is probably when I started buying in about five um, years ago with my first tranche of Microsoft. And this is just a beast of a business. Looking at some of their financials, in one quarter, they did over $56 billion of revenue, up 8%. Their gross margin was 70%, so almost $40 billion. That's crazy margins. Operating income, 43% margins. $20 billion of that income in one quarter. Um, so this company is just um, a revenue beast. They make tons of margin on their revenue and on their products. So great business to be in. They have tons of moats across their businesses. Looking at um, their shares outstanding, similar to McDonald's, look at how many shares they just buy back because they make so much free cash flow. They don't even know what to do with it all in addition to all the growth that they have. So they've gone from... Um, They've gone from around 8.5 billion shares 10 years ago down to 7.5 billion. So they've bought back about 15% of the company on top of increasing the dividend a lot over that time period. Taking a look at the dividend here, they've gone from 2013 where they were paying about 23 cents a share to today where they're paying 68 cents. So they've 3x the dividend, the stock price is 3x, um, just a lot of value creation that they've had here. Looking at their valuation quickly, going to do about ten dollars this year, eleven fifty next year. So looking at their EPS, trading at about thirty-two times current earnings, and then about twenty-eight to twenty-nine times next year's earnings. Like I said, this company always trades for a bit of an expensive multiple. I know there was a good opportunity to get in when tech was crashing later last year in the two twenties, two thirties. Um, and you were getting it at more of like a 25 times, but this company typically trades in the low thirties and you just got to buy for the future growth. If you believe in the company so far, it's worked out really well for me with that position that I just showed you over here. Okay. Going into the fourth and final stock that I'm up pretty big in, um, it is meta. So meta has definitely been one of the more dramatic stocks in my portfolio, looking at my meta position here, I'm up 111% um, in this particular account. I hold Meta across multiple accounts um, at about $290. It's actually dipped here about 10% from the top, which was about 325. So we're down about 11%. Um, but overall, I'll take where we are now over where we were back in November at $90 a share. Looking at this company, they don't pay a dividend, but they do do lots of share buybacks. I think they've gone from about 30 um, or sorry about 3 billion shares to 2.6 billion something like that so they've bought back over 10% of the company in the last couple of years they have tons of revenue coming in you can see um, really well diversified to US and Canada at the bottom then Europe then Asia Pacific and then rest of the world so they have just as much revenue for the most part coming from Europe and Asia Pacific as they do North America um, as we look at just their ARPUs, which are their average revenues per user, you can see how high they are in US and Canada, up at $50 per user, whereas some of these other regions like Asia Pacific are only 10%. So you'd think that as those markets get more developed, as the advertising markets and, and the economies get more developed, maybe they can't get to the US numbers of $50 a person, but I feel like there's a lot of growth room, um, even for, for Europe as well, to get closer to $50, whether that's $20, whether that's $25. It's huge growth numbers just in revenue per user without even bringing in more users or getting more watch time on their family of apps. And then the last thing here is just at the end of the day, they have about 4 billion people going on their products every month, over 3 billion people going on their products every week or every day rather, daily active users. So I just feel like when we look at how much of the world this company is reaching on a daily and monthly basis. 
it's so many opportunities for them to create a lot of value, bring in a lot of revenue, whether that's future through e-commerce or other things that they're building out, um, or just through more direct advertising as new innovations and technologies come out. I just think that asset of reaching 4 billion people, half of the world on a monthly basis can be monetized in a much greater way than it is today moving forward. And that's why I still own this stock in a pretty big way, despite um, the huge run up that we've seen here um, year to date up 132%. Looking at their earnings estimate here, they're into about $12.30 this year, but over $15 next year. So on this year's earnings, the company's trading um, a bit over 20, probably about 25 times. But on next year's, if they do $15 a share, the company's trading at about 19 times next year's earnings. So very volatile company. Lots can transpire. Lots can happen. Um, Mark Zuckerberg is known to you know go all over the place with CapEx. Uh, with his Reality Labs uh, projects and stuff like that. But overall, I think the valuation is very fair for what the future potential is for this company. So despite being up over 100%, it's one that I'm going to hold on to as well. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video for more. That's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys like these four stocks. Also, let me know in the comments if you own any of these four stocks or have any thoughts on any of these four stocks. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.